Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying for Beginners. Today we're going to cover a little more materials and we're going to cover peacock hurl and how to strip them. Here we have peacock hurl and this isn't a real good example but this is a strong peacock hurl. This is a been using this for quite a while. You can see all of those loose ones there. Just going to get rid of them. And the strong peacock hurl, this is very good stuff when you want to keep the hurl on there. And here we have a feather. And this here is a, this is the peacock sword up here. You can see the different uh, nice colors on there and stuff. And then as you go down, you see this is where the strung peacock hurl comes from. They they put they pull all of these off. And that's where you get the strung peacock hurl. And here's another one uh peacock feather and we have an eye. And you can see on this these uh hurl are very long. These are probably 10 inches on these. But this is also where the strung peacock hurl comes from right off of these and uh, for stripping them there's a couple ways you can do this and you can do these by hand and that's what I'm going to show you but you can also do these by using a bleach and water mixture with one-third bleach and two-thirds water but you have to be very careful when you use the bleach because you can leave it in the bleach too long and make them very brittle and actually bleach them where they're gonna turn out white. Now there's a couple ways you can do this by hand you can just take your fingernail and run your fingernail on it don't worry if the tips get break off on you you're still gonna have a lot, a lot of material and I'm just using my fingernail and you can see it coming off over here all of this You can see all the hurl on my fingernail, but you can also use a rubber band and run it on there, or you can use a pencil eraser to get it. And here I have a, a uh, this is a foam cylinder to make popper heads, and I've been using this, and it's working pretty good. Just run it on there. And then you have to, of course, flip it over and I always go from the top to the bottom and you can see this clearing up clearing off pretty good there and you can see all of the hurl on the foam cylinder I'm going to take an eye one of the eye stems and hold it by the tip just like I did with the previous You can see right there, well, maybe not. You can see the hurl coming right off. Here I'm going to take a pencil eraser and do another one. You can see it come off really quickly. Just this bottom part, you can see that soft part there. Just that bottom part would be good. And we'll flip that. And strip that set that piece. And that top part just broke right off. And here's another Here's another strong hurl. I'm just going to use the eraser on it just to show you how easily it, it's done. Look at all of that. Flip that over. And here we have our finished product. Here's the the hurl from the strung section 
And you can see all the way up at the top here, I didn't get them that good. They're going to most likely break off. But you can see on the strung one, you don't see a big color uh, distinction between a light and a dark. Here's the peacock eye that I stripped. Nice and clear. You can see a light top and a dark bottom there. There's even a better one in here. The thing with the eyes, when you strip the eyes, you only get short pieces. Here you can see a nice distinct, the bottom is light and the top is dark. Now since we just stripped the peacock hurl, I figured we might as well make a fly with them. The hook I have in the vise is a 2302, this is a size 16. It is a 3 extra long, semi-dropped, down eye. This is a dry fly hook from Green Caddis Outfitters, greencaddis.com. I'm going to use some 16 knot just because I have it, olive thread. I'm going to tie an olive parachute emerger. I'm going to put that base of thread down and we're going to come down about halfway and come forward half of that. Now for our wing and our shuck, I have a slate colored poly yarn. We're going to tie in the wing post and we can leave this wing post pretty long. To make the important part is more the shuck, but we can also just uh, trim that later too. We're going to tie this on top. Put a couple of wraps around the wing post itself and then we'll take the thread back and we'll stop that about where it would hang at the barb of the hook. Now we got this is way too big and way too thick so I'm just going to cut some of these out. Just want a little hint of a shuck that's hanging out. Cut it down to length. Cut it to size. Kind of cut that at a bit of an angle there. Now I'm going to take one of the peacock eye hurl that I stripped. You can see the two distinct colors. And I didn't get a whole lot. I mean, I got plenty to do this fly, but it's about two and a half inches only. We're going to tie this in from the bottom, the thick part. And this was soaking in my coffee, actually, my hot coffee, for about 10 minutes. Five, seven, eight, ten minutes, something like that. Before I wrap it, I'm going to put some head cement on the shaft, shank. Now, I want a light pair of hackle pliers. I'm going to use these rotational hackle pliers. I don't want to use the that easy hackle pliers. I get too pull too hard on them with that. With these light ones where the hackle has a tendency or the stripped hurl will have a tendency to pull out of it. I'll be lighter with it and I won't break the stem. At least that's what the plan is. And you can see you got segmented body there. Nice light and dark colors. I'm going to bring that right up to the post. I'm going to wrap as much as I can just for demonstration here. I'll even wrap a little bit in front of it. And there I just wrapped two and a half inches of strip peacock eye with no problem whatsoever. And then I can break off the excess and that broke very easily. 
Now for the hackle, I have a medium blue dun from a rooster cape. I gave it the haircut on the bottom. This is just a little bit long, so I'm going to trim that. I'm going to tie it in right at the eye. And I'm going to wrap that up to the wing post and then go around the wing post. If you have a little trouble with this, with your thread sliding off, one thing you can do is loosen it and hang it down, and then you'll be wrapping sideways instead of, you'll be wrapping vertically instead of horizontally. I'm going to come up the wing post. Oop, there it just slipped. And come back down. And you can see I have a nice, base or stiff post to wrap my hackle. Come back slightly because I wrap too much. And I'm going to take a little bit of Betis Olive dubbing. And we'll do a few crossovers on the around the wing post. Maybe put a little bit more on there. Like I always say, it's easier to put more than to take off. Just want to get that a little fluffier. This one I'm not going to wrap as tightly as the previous. And you'll see it's going to be a little bit fluffier. Now I can take my now I can take my easy hackle plier because this hackle is secured much better. I'm going to pull down first just to bend it, don't pull hard, and that will make it easier wrapping. Hold that wing post if you need to. Like that. Just gonna hold it and I'm going to put it around with my fingers. And I have a lot of feather here, so I'm gonna go up and down it. And I'm gonna come back down. Now I'm gonna tie it off to the wing post. Just take your time and get the hackle underneath the or get the thread underneath the hackles. And then I'm going to put a couple of wraps under the hackle that I'm going to trim. Okay. I'm going to remove the excess. And now we can give it a whip finish. I'm going to use my fingers for this. It helps, using your fingers helps you to get that thread underneath where you need it. I'm going to apply head cement to the thread before I pull it all the way through. So I'm actually using the hook on my whip finisher right now to hold them open. You can see two distinct threads right there. And I'm going to apply some to the left hand side as I'm looking at it. And I got a little bit on the on the other side. Can't always be can't always get what you want. When you pull it in, that head cement goes right in to where it's supposed to be. Try not to get it on both sides because you'll get head cement on your whip finisher. You got to clean it off. And now all I need to do is trim the wing post. I'm going to kind of separate that there a little bit to, to make it look more like a natural mayfly wing. And I'm going to 
trim it off and then I'm going to trim down towards the rear And here we have an olive parachute emerger tied with the peacock eye hurl that we just stripped. Hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. And most of all, I thank you very much for watching my videos.